The Gantt chart view of the project is very intuitive as it displays all the activities on a timeline. If we have a large project with numerous activities, however, our Gantt chart will run several pages deep by several pages wide. Another method of representing the project more concisely is a network diagram. This network diagram is associated with the PERT CPM method of project scheduling, which is an amalgam of two original methods, Program Evaluation and Review Technique, PERT, and Critical Path Method, CPM. To draw the network diagram, we use a series of circles and arrows. We start with Activity A, which has no predecessors. B depends on A. C also has no predecessors. Now A and C form the beginning points for our project. Anytime we have loose ends, they are a potential source for confusion. So it is a good practice to tie them down with a start button. This zero activity start can also be thought of as a milestone. Activity D depends on B. E depends on both B and C. F depends on both D and E. G depends on both D and E. H depends on F. I depends on G. J depends on G. Finally, K depends on H, I, and J. Our project ends with K, so we don't have any loose ends on this side. If we did, it would be good practice to finish with an end button or milestone. How do we identify our critical path or figure out how quickly the project can be completed? One method is to trace every single path from beginning to end. The total of the activities on path A, B, D, G, I, K is 25 days. 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 7. Likewise, the total for path A, B, D, G, J, K is 26 days. In a similar manner, we can list the total for every possible path. Comparing all these totals, we take the longest path, or A, B, D, F, H, K, to be the critical path. The project duration will be the length of the critical path, or 28 days. Why would we not follow a shorter path to complete the project quicker, if we could? Say we took path C, E, G, I, K. Could we not finish the project in 19 days? Not really. After I finish C, I will still have to wait for A and B to finish before starting E. Likewise, I will have to wait for D to finish before moving to G. Then I will have to wait for every other activity to finish before moving to K. In other words, I will have to wait for all the paths to finish before the project will be complete. The date by which all the paths will be completed is day 28, as indicated by the longest path. Tracing every single path from beginning to end is fine for a small project, but can you imagine how many possible paths will be there for a larger project? There is a more methodical procedure available. In the four boxes for each activity, we are going to fill in some numbers. The first number is the early start date, 
ES. This is the earliest date by which the activity can possibly start. The second number is the early finish date, EF. This is the earliest date by which the activity can possibly finish. Let us evaluate these two values for our project activities. Looking at activity A, we can start it at the earliest on day 0 and finish it on day 3. Moving on to activity B, do we start on day 4? Yes and no. We are using the end of day convention here. Activity A started at the beginning of day 1, which we called the end of day 0. Likewise, B will start at the beginning of day 4, which is the same as end of day 3. Using the same convention for all our numbers avoids any potential confusion. So B can start on day 3 and finish on day 8. Likewise, C can start on day 0 and finish on day 4. D can start on day 8 and finish on day 12. Looking at E, we see that it depends on both B and C. The earliest date by which both B and C will be finished is day 8. Therefore, the earliest E can start is day 8 and finish by day 10. Likewise, F depends on both D and E. So the earliest F can start is day 12 and finish on day 15. And so on. Finally, K can start on day 21 and finish on day 28. Therefore, the earliest date by which the project can finish is day 28. Having worked forwards through the network diagram to get the early start and early finish dates, we need to work backwards to get the late finish and late start dates. Looking at activity K, the latest we must finish it, without delaying the project, is day 28. For that, we must start at the latest on day 21. Since K must start by day 21 at the latest, J must finish by day 21 at the latest, which means it must start by day 18 at the latest. Likewise, I must finish by day 21 at the latest and start by day 19 at the latest. H must finish by day 21 at the latest and start by day 15 at the latest. And so on until we have entered all the late finish and late start numbers. Now consider activity A. It can start on day 0 at the earliest. Also, it must start on day 0 at the latest. Likewise, it can finish on day 3 at the earliest and must finish on day 3 at the latest. How much slack do we have in this activity? 0. We can see that it is a critical activity. Likewise, Looking at all the activities with zero slack, we can identify our critical path to be A, B, D, F, H, K. The remaining activities C, E, G, I, and J are non-critical. How much slack is there in these activities? Consider activity C. It can start on day zero at the earliest, or be pushed out to start on day six at the latest. That works out to a slack of 6 days. Likewise, it can finish on day 4 at the earliest or be pushed out to finish on day 10 at the latest. Once again, that works out to a slack of 6 days. All of these computations can be performed using software such as Microsoft Project. The remainder of this presentation shows how to use Microsoft Project to develop the Gantt chart 
and network diagram and calculate the activity slack, early start, early finish, late start, late finish times, etc.